Ecosystem services are the things that nature provides to us that we value but that we rarely pay for. Uh, when, um, when our wetlands remove pollutants and nutrients uh, from, uh, from the water that flows across the land, that's a service to us, cleaning our water. When uh, trees take, uh, um, uh, sequester carbon from the atmosphere, uh, that's a service to us that helps stabilize our climate. Uh, when uh, forests and grasslands provide us with recreational opportunities for wildlife, that's a service. Those are services that we take for granted, but that in fact, uh, if we were to try to replace them with human engineering, we, it would, we would discover they were very costly. Probably the most important thing people need to understand about ecosystem services is that we are losing them. That is to say, uh, the things that nature provides us for free, that we take for granted, but that we greatly value, uh, there is less and less of those uh, all the time. We're losing um, our wildlife habitat. We're losing the capacity of our uh, wetlands to store floodwaters and thus experiencing um, more floods. On the Louisiana coast, the loss of um, coastal marshes intensified the impact of Hurricane Katrina. Um, we're losing these uh, ecosystem services, and as a result, we will pay a high price. I think it's important to take into account the impacts of development upon these ecosystem services. The economists call these externalities. That is to say, when, um, when a private landowner develops property that has some impact on the air quality or the water quality, somebody else bears the uh, burden of that, unless we find a way to internalize those uh, costs. And so I do think it's quite important as we make land use planning and, and related decisions to try to factor those external costs into the equation of, of whether a particular project is worth it or not. Over the next decade or two, there is a huge market potential for some ecosystem services, most notably carbon sequestration. Uh, I think most people anticipate there will be a cap and trade program for stabilizing the climate, and that will create an uh, enormous market for um, carbon sequestration. I think um, there will be other service markets as well, ecosystem service markets, but that will be the dominant one. The market for wetlands and endangered species habitat as mitigation for impacts to wetlands or endangered species from development. In both cases, um, the phenomenon of banking has happened. That is, people have invested in uh, mitigation that will be applied later, and they've banked credits earned from their investments in order to use those credits later. Uh, this is a growing, although still small, but nevertheless important uh, part of how we address impacts to those two resources that we highly value, wetlands and rare species. Well, I think the two points to share with them are first that um, um, the services that nature provides for free are services they need to take into account when they make their land use planning decisions. And secondly, that uh, creatively applied, there are opportunities for uh, landowners to, to um, earn income from providing services from which the community as a whole benefits. Uh, landowners who um, uh, help uh, a community secure flood protection, clean water, clean air, what have you, are providing a service and properly applied, creative, creatively applied, I think it's possible for those landowners to, um, uh, to be rewarded financially for what they're doing. And that's something local land use planners should, should very much try to do. Two types of markets. One is a voluntary market in which people pay uh, voluntarily because they, they get good feelings or they get good publicity for doing so. And the second is a so-called compliance or regulatory market where they pay because there is a regulatory program in place that requires them to offset the harm they are causing by uh, some form of mitigation. Um, I think that um, what is needed is to have somewhat uh, more expansive and somewhat more tailored regulatory programs so as to foster the development of more of these market-based solutions to environmental problems. Uh, government, I think, has two roles. Uh, one role is to oversee uh, the markets to make sure that what people are buying and selling are real. That is to say that there is a, a real benefit associated with a, a credit being sold. 
And secondly, um, uh, the government needs to set the standards. Uh, in the case of, um, uh, well, climate change, for example, government uh, has to decide whether the societal goal is to reduce our emissions of greenhouse gases by 50 percent or 80 percent or whatever the percentage may be. It's the role of government to decide what the target is and then to provide the, um, the framework within which people can buy and sell in a market in order to, 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 to meet that target. The only thing I would uh, add is that people ought to get out and enjoy them. Um, the, the, one of the values we derive from ecosystem services is that they make nature a great place to experience. So my advice would be um, get out of your house and into the woods or fields and, and see it firsthand.